We're going to go through the five key point method for drawing a graph of a trigonometric function. To, uh, to do this, um, we have the problem, of course, up here, and then uh, down here for reference, I have drawn a unit circle that has these the four quarter points labeled around the outside to remind me about them. And, um, and finally, I have a table over here in anticipation of putting some, uh, some values into that. So, um, so we start off by first figuring out the period of our function. The function here is g of t is 2 times cosine pi over 2 times t plus 1. So the horizontal scaling is indicated by this part. Um, and so we know that the regular period of a cosine graph is 2 pi. And this graph has horizontal scaling that should be the reciprocal of the number inside. So we're using here the fact that um, in a function, when I replace what would normally be just t with a constant times t, that we have a horizontal scale by a factor of the reciprocal of that number. So I'm always multiplying 2 pi times the reciprocal of this number that is multiplied by t. So in this case, this is 4, which is nice. That's a very nice period uh, because it's easy to draw. So my period is 4. So that's step 1 is first decide what the period is. Then over on the graph, we're going to mark the period. So 4 would be here. And then to get our five key points, we're going to split this interval between 0 and 4 up into quarters. So halfway would be here at 2. Halfway would be at 1. And halfway here would be at 3. So I'm simply taking the period and splitting it into quarters. This gives me five key points. So my key points have uh, x-coordinate, well in this case we call it t, but the coordinates are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So whatever the five points we get here, starting with 0, we're going to write those values down. Now next to that we want to compute g of t. Now this is simply function evaluation. So for each of these values of t, I'm going to plug that t into the, the formula for g. So remember, the function g of t is given by the formula here. So when t equals 0, what I'm calculating here is g of 0. So let me write out what this is. And we'll, so g of 0 means take our formula for g of t, and we're going to change the t to 0. So pi over 2 times 0. And this formula, pi over 2 times 0. So I'm just going to write 0 there, plus 1. So this is 2 times the cosine of 0 plus 1. What's the cosine of 0? Well, that's why I have my handy reference here. Remember, 0 degree or 0 radian angle is going out this way, and the cosine is the y-coordinate. So the y, sorry, the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate of this point is 1. So this is twice 1 plus 1. So here I would get 3. Similarly, I would say g of 1. This is now plugging 1 in for t into this same formula. I use this. That was terrible. So plugging 1 in for t, 2 times cosine and look at what our formula is, pi over 2 times t. Remember, t is 1 here, so pi over 2. Pi over 2 times 1 is pi over 2. So here I have cosine of pi over 2. Again, I come into my unit circle. Pi over 2 radians is straight up. The x-coordinate here is 0, so this is twice 0 plus 1. So in our table, we enter this as an output of 1. So if we do that for each point, each time we're placing a different number t, a different number in place of t, but in each case, the number that's inside the cosine here, so here we'll have cosine of pi over 2 times 2, pi over 2 times 2 is pi plus 1, and you can see that each time we do that, the value of cosine that I need is coming from this unit circle. Pi radians points out this way. The cosine of pi radians, therefore, is the x-coordinate here. 
which is negative 1. So this is twice negative 1 plus 1 equals negative 1. When I use a value of 3 for t, um, I'll get 1 again. Uh, that's going to come from twice 0 plus 1, since the x coordinate here is 0. And then when I get to t equals 4, uh, what should happen is I should get the same output that I got using t equals 0, because this is the end of the period. So at t equals 0 and t equals 4, I expect these to be the same. So um, at any rate, you can do these values. That's three of them calculated out, and the other two you can do. But these five points then get plotted on my graph. I can get my pen to go up there. So 0, 3 is the first point. 1, 1 is the second point. Uh, 2, negative 1. Uh, my point's in the way. So it's that guy. It's right under there. 3, 1. Going back up, and 4, 3. So these are my five points. The graph comes down. There's a point there under that number 2. Comes back up and goes there. So the period of 4, when I say extend this graph to the full extent of the given grid, remember the period of 4 that we found means that if I were to add or subtract 4 to the x-coordinates, I'll get the same point. So for example, here I have the point 1, 1. Four units later, that would about would be there. It would be at five one. Four units later, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, it's off the chart. Not quite on there. This point is two negative one. So four units later, it's at six negative one. This point is at three one. Four units later, seven one. This point uh, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry. This point. Uh, is at 4, 3, 4 units later, I'm at 8, 3. So all of these points are there as well, and I can play the same game going the other way. If I take the point uh, 3, 1, and I subtract 4 from the x, I'm back here. Taking the point 2, negative 1, backing up 4 units. Take the point 1, 1, and back up 4 units. Take the point 0, 3, and back up 4 units. So I can play this game where I am moving four units back at a time, and I get all these points. So this is periodic. The thing repeats itself over and over. I'm getting this from just doing it once and then repeating that pattern back and forth. And we know the shape of these graphs is a sinusoidal wave, so I'll try to draw it, but it's not going to work too well with this. Pen. So this is what the shape should look like. Um, so I'll just leave it at that, and I'll show another picture of the graph here in just a second. Once I've worked on this graph and tried to draw it carefully, the finished result will look something like this. This is what a, a computer system drew for me. Um, one of the, uh, the interesting questions about this is, you know, we asked for the not only the period of this, which is 4, and we can see the local max and the local min. We can describe those, and those happen in very nice intervals. Uh, one interesting question about this is um, what the intercepts are. And so the x-intercept is actually not all that obvious, right? To get the x-intercept, we have to... Um, we have to... Uh, Think about what that means. For the, for the to have an x-intercept means that we want our function, which is 2 times cosine of pi over 2 t plus 1 to equal 0. So this generally seems like a hard question, given the information that we've, we've had so far. And we will talk more about solving this kind of equation. But for this problem, we can actually do it, because you're, you're interested in having cosine of pi over 2t equal negative 1 half. Right? That's what it really comes down to. Subtract 1 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, 
and this is what you want to have happen. But this is one of those values where we know how this how this arises. We know that we get a uh, a cosine value of negative one half for angles that are negative one half would be like here. If there's a point that has a, an x coordinate of negative one half. And another one would be down here. There's a point where the x coordinate's negative one half. Um, for most points, we wouldn't be able to deal with this without more information from the from the book, and we'll certainly see this later on. But for these particular points, we actually know the answer to these. These are part of our standard uh, unit circle angles. The angle that points up to this point is a uh, what we would what we call a 120 degree angle or 2 pi over 3, and the one that points down here is 4 uh, 4 pi over 3. So we can actually identify the angles that would do this, and so it's not, it's not crazy that, that we should be able to solve this equation and figure out what values these are happening at. And so, in fact, these guys happen at fairly nice values. They happen at values of t that make this thing in here, say, 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3. That's where these numbers come from. So definitely a more advanced problem for this point in the course, but something to think about for later. But hopefully this has helped you see how to use the five point, uh, five key value method to produce a graph of a trigonometric function.